In the last video, we began to introduce some of the key pieces of information that we can glean from NMR spectra. In that video, we looked at chemical shifts, exactly where a signal resides along the x-axis as an indicator of the chemical environment that that particular proton is in, meaning an indicator of what functional groups and atoms are nearby. That information alone is not adequate for solving complete chemical structures. And so we also fortunately have access to other information from proton NMR spectra. Namely, what we are going to focus on in this video is the concept of multiplicity. By the end of this video, you should have an understanding of what exactly multiplicity is and what does multiplicity indicate about the structure of a particular molecule. So let's take a look at what we mean when we say multiplicity. What I'm showing here is the proton NMR spectrum for the structure, the ether, that we see here at the left-hand side of the screen. Based on our understanding of chemical shifts, we would expect this molecule to have three different chemical shifts appear. One chemical shift for the CH3 group protons that I've highlighted in pink. Another chemical shift for the single hydrogen that we see right here. And then a third chemical shift corresponding to both of the sets of CH3 groups here and here, because those are totally symmetrical to one another. They're both directly bonded to a CH group and that CH group is directly bonded to an oxygen, which is directly bonded to a CH3 group. So due to that symmetry, those would appear as a single signal. So therefore we anticipate that our proton NMR spectrum for this molecule will have three different chemical shifts, three different signals. When we look at the actual proton NMR spectrum for this molecule shown here, you may be a little bit confused because you may look at this and see multiple peaks showing up here and you may be trying to count all of these as different signals. In actuality, what is the case when we look at a real NMR spectrum is that these signals can undergo what we refer to as signal splitting to take a single signal and split it into these multiple parts or these multiplets as we call them. So what we are going to look at here is this phenomenon referred to as signal splitting also known as multiplicity, as the more technical term for this signal splitting phenomenon. And what happens is that when you see these clusters of signals, clusters of peaks that are really close together, those generally represent a signal signal that has been split into multiple parts. How is a signal in NMR split into multiple parts? Well, what happens is that the chemical environment of a particular proton is impacted by the number of protons that are on the adjacent carbon. In other words, it's impacted by the number of vicinal protons. And the impact of the number of vicinal protons is that it causes the signal for the proton that's being measured and monitored to be split. So in order to determine what the exact splitting pattern is for a particular proton, we apply the N plus one rule. The N plus one rule indicates that the multiplicity, the number of subpeaks for a particular signal is equal to the number of vicinal hydrogens plus one. So in that N plus one rule, N is equal to the number of vicinal hydrogens, where vicinal hydrogens are defined as the number of hydrogens that are on an adjacent carbon atom. And so hence, when we think about the multiplicity of the CH3 group here, when we look at the CH3 group, we apply the N plus one rule, N plus one, where N is equal to the number of vicinal hydrogens. So we come over to the adjacent spot and we look for a carbon there and how many hydrogens are directly bonded there since there's no carbons there and hence no hydrogens directly bonded there. The N value for this set of hydrogens is equal to zero and zero plus one makes one. And so we would expect the 
CH3 group there to show up in our NMR spectrum as a singlet, as a single signal, as a single peak. And we can recognize that as this signal right here. It is the only singlet within our NMR spectrum. The others are split into these patterns of multiple peaks that are closely spaced together. And so what I've represented here is that red star represents our methyl group, which we describe as a singlet. A singlet is a single peak. It has a multiplicity equal to one, meaning the peak is not split into multiple parts because there are no vicinal hydrogens. The number of vicinal hydrogens is equal to zero. So another proton that we can take a look at here is this CH group proton. And in order to determine the multiplicity of that, we count the number of vicinal hydrogens and add one. So N plus one here would be equal to number of vicinal hydrogens. Remember that vicinal means on the adjacent carbon. So we look at the adjacent carbon here and here. There's no adjacent carbon there, so we don't look at that. So here we have three hydrogens. Down here we have another three. So that's a total of six vicinal hydrogens in total. So N plus one would be equal to six plus one, which would mean seven. So the total there is seven, which we could refer to as a septet. And that would have to correspond to the set of signals that we see here, whereas we count them up, we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Keep in mind the ones at the very edge there are very small, and that's typical that these multiplicities form specific patterns that are symmetrical. So we see a symmetrical pattern here coming up and down from the septet. And that's one way that we can recognize that these signals are all, that these peaks all correspond to one single signal that has been split into this multiplet pattern. And the multiplet pattern corresponds to how many vicinal hydrogens there are. So in the case of this blue proton right here, there were six vicinal hydrogens, all of those ones in green, and hence six plus one, where six is equal to the number of vicinal hydrogens plus one, makes six plus one equals seven, giving us that septet, that splitting pattern or multiplicity equal to seven. Then we come to our green protons, which are going to be represented by a single signal because the, all these six green protons were all symmetrical in the molecules. So they show up as one signal in the NMR spectrum. And the multiplicity of that, what we do to figure that out, is take any one of those individual protons and ask yourself how many hydrogens are vicinal to that proton that you've selected. So if we look at the proton here and we ask how many are vicinal to one of those individual protons using the n plus 1 rule, n plus 1 here is going to be 1 plus 1 because relative to one of these protons in green, there's just one vicinal proton because we come over here to the adjacent carbon and that vicinal proton is the one that's in blue. And hence, N plus one would be equal to one plus one because there's one vicinal hydrogen there. So that would give us a multiplicity of two. And we can recognize that in our NMR spectrum if we come over to here, what I put the green star on very upfield here is going to be what we refer to as our doublet. It is these twin peaks that are symmetrical to one another. And that indicates that there is a multiplicity equal to two and that there must therefore be one vicinal hydrogen because N plus one makes two and N equals one vicinal hydrogen. So this signal splitting and multiplicity is going to give you an indication of how many hydrogens are vicinal to the one that you are observing the signal to. And that's going to be the real take home message and what we can apply out of this to help us piece together the puzzle of solving chemical structures is that the multiplicity indicates how many protons must be vicinal to the one that is being measured. And when we say the one that's being measured, we're referring to the one that we are directly observing on the x-axis. So when we observe a chemical shift right here at about 1 ppm, and we see that that's a doublet, that indicates that there are a total of one hydrogen atom that is vicinal to the signal that we are measuring here. So the multiplicity is going to tell us what is adjacent 
to the proton that we are measuring in the spectrum. This is really useful because this is going to help us understand not just one atom in the molecule, but it's going to allow us to understand the relationship between protons that are attached to adjacent carbon. So it's going to tell us how many protons are on the adjacent carbon atom relative to the one that we are looking at. So we've used some terminology thus far to determine or describe the multiplicity or the splitting pattern. And I want to make you aware of some of the terms that we can use to describe these different multiplicities. So if we have using the n plus one rule, if n plus one equals one, we refer to that as a singlet, a single signal. It would show up on your X axis like so that indicates that there will be no vicinal hydrogens because n is equal to zero. If n plus one is equal to two, we refer to that in technical terms as a doublet. The two signals are symmetrical to one another like so and closely spaced. If we have three signals that are spaced closely together and um, correspond to a number of vicinal hydrogens of equal to two because two plus one equals three. And the triplet signal also has some symmetry going on where we have this pattern where the center peak is taller than the other two in a specific ratio there. If we have four as the multiplicity, we refer to that as a quartet, much like four singers are referred to as a quartet. That also has this specific symmetrical pattern. And we can go so on from there. And typically, once we get above a multiplicity of about four, one common way to refer to the multiplicity is just as a multiplet, meaning several peaks that are spaced closely together there. So let's next apply this scientific terminology of singlet, doublet, multiplet, etc., toward an example problem where we are going to look at a particular structure and specify what the anticipated multiplicity is for each of the different sets of protons. So first we can ask the question of how many signals would we expect to see, meaning how many chemical shifts would we anticipate observing for this molecule? And we're gonna label the multiplicity for each one. So what I'm going to do to determine the number of signals that we would expect to see in an NMR spectrum for this is highlight them. So starting from the left, we'd have a CH3 group right here. That is in and of itself going to be its own signal because there's no other protons in the molecule that are symmetrical to these three of this CH3 group here. So I'm gonna highlight that as its own signal. Then I'm gonna use blue to come over and highlight this signal right here. This is going to be its own signal there. There would be a CH group present there. And there are no other protons that are completely in an identical environment to that where they're adjacent to an oxygen atom. So this is gonna be its own signal here in blue. Coming along through the, through the chain here, we have a methyl group here. That's going to be its own signal. It is not going to be equivalent to either of the methyl groups out here or elsewhere in the molecule because this methyl group is two bonds away from the oxygen, whereas these two methyl groups are three bonds away from the oxygen. So they're not in the same environment as the one in green. So the one in green stands alone as its own signal. We can come on further down the chain. This CH group that I have highlighted and circled in yellow is going to show up as its own signal because it is in an environment that's different than the one in blue here and different than all the others. And then finally, the two CH3 groups that are out here at the end here and here that I've circled in red, those are going to show up as a single signal because their chemical environment is equivalent. We can rotate around the molecule here via the single bonds to show that those two are interchangeable due to the symmetry that is here at this isopropyl branching point. So the total number of signals that we would expect to see in an NOR spectrum for this is going to correspond to one, corresponding to these two methyl groups here, two, adding in that yellow signal, three, including the blue, four, including the green, and then five being this far left-hand pink circle there. So the total number of signals that we expect to see in an NMR spectrum for this molecule is five. And then recognizing the multiplicity of each of these signals, we can go through and apply the N plus one rule. So if we're out here at the left end of the molecule and we count the number of 
of vicinal hydrogens. We look at the adjacent carbon or carbons and count how many protons are directly bonded there. The only vicinal proton is the one right here that I'm circling with my laser pointer. There are no vicinal hydrogens there. Since there's zero vicinal hydrogens there, N plus one would be equal to one because there's zero vicinal hydrogens plus one equals one. So this would be a singlet would be the proper terminology to use to describe this multiplicity. Let's jump over to the proton that is in blue here, counting up the number of vicinal hydrogens to apply the N plus one rule. Number of vicinal hydrogens, there is going to be a total of three vicinal hydrogens. We look at this green uh, proton set here because that's a CH3. So that would be three vicinal hydrogens there. We have to add up all the vicinal hydrogens though. And so there's another vicinal hydrogen we pick up by coming the other way over to here because this is another adjacent hydro adjacent carbon that has the proton bonded to it. So that'd be one more proton there. So there's a total of four vicinal hydrogens here because there's three right here and one over here. So that's a total of four. And then N plus one. So we add that plus one there and that would give us a grand total of five summing that up. So this would be what we could refer to as a multiplet because I was generally referring to uh, situations where we had more than four as the multiplicity as a multiplet. You could also refer to that as a pentad if you wanted. So we come over to the next spot here in line. And for that, we'll go up here to the green signal. So determining the number of vicinal hydrogens is N plus one. Number of vicinal hydrogens, we come to the only adjacent proton is the one right here in blue that has one hydrogen directly bonded to it. So therefore there is one vicinal hydrogen, one plus one makes two. And so therefore we describe that as a doublet. Coming along, we'll go with the yellow group next. This is our CH group there. And we count the total number of vicinal hydrogens. So we do N plus one here. Total number of vicinal hydrogens, looking at all of them that are direct are bonded here on the adjacent carbon. So we have three here, three more here, and one here. That makes a grand total of seven. So our number of vicinal hydrogens would be seven is our N value plus one would make eight. So that's going to be an octet, which we generally would just refer to as a multiplet. So quite a complex, large splitting pattern going on there because we have a grand total of seven signal, seven hydrogens that are on the adjacent carbon, seven vicinal hydrogen, in other words, three plus three plus one. So seven total plus the one using the N plus one rule gives us eight there. And then finally, we come to the red set of methyl groups at the end here. Since these show up as a single signal in the proton NMR spectrum, we therefore look at those as one when we are evaluating the multiplicity of those since they show up just once in the spectrum as a single signal. We count the number of protons that are vicinal to one of these protons. So we could take this one, for example, toward the upper right, count how many protons are vicinal to that particular proton. It's gonna be one vicinal hydrogen because we come to the adjacent carbon and there's just one proton here in yellow. And so therefore N plus one is going to be equal to one plus one, which makes two, which is described as a doublet in correct scientific terminology. So the red protons show up as a single signal and that single signal would be a doublet because they have one adjacent proton. Um, in other words, one vicinal proton. So this identifies the multiplicity for each of the protons that show up as a signal within our NMR spectrum. And this is a skill that you should be familiar with as you think about preparing for the upcoming quiz. And there's some extra practice on this in the worksheet for chapter 13 as well. In the next video, what we're going to do is further complement our understanding of chemical shifts and multiplicity by looking at the concept of integrals. In other words, how large are the signals and what information can that tell us about the structure of an organic molecule?